walk around family welcome back to another video today we have a 2024 honda civic sport touring in boost blue pearl with black interior six speed manual transmission i have to say that slow because this is really a rare bird right now if you want to get manual transmission in the civic right now Besides the SI and the Type R, you have two options. You have the Sport hatchback and the Sport Touring hatchback. The Sport is going to have the 2 liter. The Sport Touring, which one this one is, will have the 1.5 turbo. And it's, I don't know about you guys, but I do not get these too often. So this is a very special car right now, especially if you don't want to pay a markup for an SI or you just don't want an SI and you don't want a Type R, that's too much car, but you want something still pretty loaded and you don't want to buy an Integra. This is the way to go. So Boost Blue Pearl, really, it's a lot of blue. This is a loud blue, and I like it because it's different. And this one is actually pretty dirty. And you can see, while it's dirty, it still looks nice, which is a nice color, because I live out here in the desert in New Mexico. So we're going to start with the front fascia, because the Civic pretty much changed in 22 to this new generation, this whole styling. It's still the same styling from 22. So you do have the new headlight, which is full LED high beam, low beam, turn signals, daytime running lights, and you do have LED fog lights as well. Now, if you get a model below the Sport Touring, EXL, the Sport, or the LX, no fog lights at all. Sport Touring and the hatchback is the only way to get fog lights. If you get a sedan, the Touring is the only way you can get fog lights. I went ahead and turned it on so you guys can get a better idea of it. I know we're in you know direct sunlight, but LED fog lights, and then your low beams are on the outside and your high beams is in the middle. I do like the newer design. I do like that the grill is a little bit different than the sedan. So if you look at a sedan, the, the pattern here is different and the sedan is more flatter up here. The hatchbacks get a, get a little forehead up front. You do have your Chrome H up front. So you have your uh, Honda emblem and you can black it out through your dealership with an accessory. Down below, you do have flat black where you show your exposed intercooler because you do have the turbo 1.5 on this model. And it's just a, overall a beautiful vehicle. Like I love the Sport Touring. If I were to get a hatchback, of course I would get the Sport Touring for the tech. Now with the newer design of the Civic, you do have the longer hood, wider windshield, updated Honda sensing camera. And because this one is a Touring, you do get rain sensing windshield wipers and that's the sensors for the Touring. Let me turn the headlights back off. All you're going to hear is that chime going on and off. They've updated windshield wipers in 22, so now the nozzle sprayer is on the wiper itself. It's not on the hood, it's not under the hood, it's on the sprayer. And they did pull back the windshield a little bit back from the tent generation to give you better visibility, more headroom in the cabin, and this A-pillar here is a little bit more slimmer too to give you more better visibility, less of blind spots as well. Taking a look at the side profile of the Civic, so the hatchbacks do give you the more slope design in the back give you kind of like a more fastback design um it is shorter than a sedan if i park the sedan next to it you'll notice it is shorter but pretty much from this portion forward is exactly like the sedan what you're paying for the hatchback is for more cargo space and like i said it's a little bit more shorter now the sport tourings do give you 18s and the tires on these are 235 40 18s if you get an exl i believe you get 17s if you get a sport you get 18 and you get an LX, you're right back down to 17. So a lot of different wheel options. This uh, Sport Touring does have a protection package on it. So that gives you the wheel locks. It don't come with wheel locks. It doesn't come with the splash guards. And you're gonna have a cargo tray in the trunk. So let's actually take a look at the window sticker. Cause a lot of people complain that I don't show the window sticker. And I had someone argue with me saying, that's not a 24, that's a 23. This is a 24, 1.5 Sport Touring. Boost Blue Pearl, black interior. Also, you can see here, six speed manual transmission. If that um, focuses on it, there you go. So 1.5 liter turbo engine, 180 horsepower. So you're looking around 28 city and 37 highway. My protection package is about 43, 266. So that put it at 33, 4, 32, 66. But if you're able to get one without like nothing on it, let's say it had no pro pack or anything like that on there, you're looking at 33,000 MSRP even. So prices definitely has gone up on sport tourings, but that's literally life right now. On the side profile here, you do have your side mirrors that have the integrated LED turn signals, body color up top, flat black down below, and the sport touring 
doesn't black out the top port of the uh, windows. So it's chrome up above, but it's black down below. You do have a body line, the crease that goes through it, because I know the 10-gen was a lot more aggressive looking, and Honda kind of toned down the design on the 11-gen, but I actually really like the subtle look on this way better than the 10-gen. You do have a little body design down below as well. Sport Touring also will give you a moonroof standard. If you get an EXL, you'll also get a moonroof. If you get a Sport or an LX, no moonroof. Taking a look at the rear, so you do have a different tail light design than the sedan, and it is combination, so you do have LED brake lights, but your turn signals and your reverse lights are regular bulbs. Um, also, your license plate uh, light, how about I say license plate holder? Your license plate light is also LED as well. I've been getting a lot of, uh, I guess, questions if that's LED or not. I've had a lot of customers that doesn't like how the rear look versus the sedan. In my opinion, it looks nice. Even without, if you put an HVD spoiler on there, it looks pretty nice. You do have parking sensors front and back on Sport Touring, so you can see some of the sensors right there. They're body colored in the bumper itself. You do get this little exhaust. It's not a real exhaust tip, they're dual exhaust. So if you look inside there, you can see the real tip is actually inside, it's just like a little piece on the outside, but it gives you a more sportier look. And then you can see it is dual exhaust underneath as well. You do get this kind of fake diffuser to make it a little bit more sporty back here. Civic is in chrome. H is in chrome and Sport Touring is in chrome, letting you know you did not buy a low trim. You got the fully loaded model. You can black that out throughout your dealership. Exposed wiper in the back. You have your nozzle here, shark fin style antenna that's body colored. Sport Tourings will have the new Honda key. Now, if you get a CVT model, you're able to get it with remote start, but because this is a manual transmission, you don't get remote start. So you get lock, unlock, you can pop the trunk, it won't open all the way, it will just unlock the trunk. I keep saying pop the trunk. It unlocks the trunk, and you have uh, your panic button, just in case you can't find it, the alarm will go off, and you do have a built-in key in the fob. You do get smart entry, so if you look on the door handle, you see just like these three little lines right here. You tap it, it will lock all the doors. You put your hand in there, it'll unlock it. You don't even have to pull it. Now, by default, it'll only unlock the driver door. That way, the boogeyman will get in with you when you're by yourself. But if you put your hand in the passenger's door, you cannot just unlock all four doors. And you can go into settings and change it to, you put your hand in the driver door, it'll unlock all the doors as well. Starting off with the door, you have soft touch up top. This portion right here is hard. Soft, uh, soft touch right here. Armrest is soft as well. And I like this, this design. I, I really like this material they use in the Civic. You do have power windows. It's only auto for the front windows. You hold it for the rear power locks and power mirrors. A little piano black, but I'm, I'm glad the whole interior is not piano black. And the door handle looks very premium. It's not aluminum or anything like that, but it just kind of looked like it is. And then you have a storage in here. Let me check, I blocked the sun so I can show you guys. So you have storage in there, a little bottle holder in there. You know, speakers down the bottom of the door. Taking a look at the seats. So you can see the Civic seat design and how the black looks. And they are perforated in the middle, so that's nice. The driver's seat is power, so you have forward, back, up, down, and you can adjust this portion right here, up, down, kind of tilt it, and then, of course, you have your back, forward and back. Now, if you want lumbar, that's when you go up to the Integra. A lot of features that's not in the Sport Touring, Honda saved it for the Integra. On the passenger side, it is power, too, forward and back, and then you can have the back go forward and back, and that's it. There's no up and down, so the four-way power on the passenger side. Let's jump into the Sport Touring. Welcome to your Honda. You will get that message every time. The Sport Touring will give you the Sport pedals. The dead pedal is not matching, but at least your gas brake and clutch is. And I know a lot of people probably don't even know what the third pedal is, but things are changing. It's really hard to find a manual transmission anymore. A lot of manufacturers are just not producing these anymore. So I know some watchers are watching like, what is that third pedal? I'm gonna go ahead and actually turn it on. So clutch in, and then it is push button to start. So hold the button. And it'll turn on for you. You gotta do your little jiggle, make sure it's in neutral. And I do have the emergency brake on as well. On the left side of the steering wheel, you do have an ear vent here. Feels very premium to the touch. You can open and close it, surrounded by some piano black. And you have your dimmer switch here for your interior lighting. You have your parking sensors on and off, traction control on and off, and a shortcut to your safety features. To pop the hood, it is right there. And you don't have a trunk lever because it's a hatchback. Honda's hatchbacks don't have a trunk release. You walk up the trunk to release it. The steering wheel is adjustable, so you can pull down, and then you can pull it pretty much up, down, in, and out. 
kind of customize it how you want to. It is manual. Taking a look at the steering wheel, it is leather wrapped, feels good to the hand, and you do have some piano black in the middle. You get the same material in the door handle right here. Actually, that, that looks nice with them together. The left side of the steering wheel will have some controls. So you have next track, previous, your volume, voice command. If you have an Apple phone, a Siri, if you have a Google device or Android device, it's a Google Assistant. And you have your scroll wheel for that screen there because the touring will give you the full digital uh, screen there with that guy focus. If you get any model below the Sport Touring or a Touring sedan, then you don't get the full digital. You have to get a Touring or a Sport Touring. If you get anything below, you get the half digital and half analog cluster that's in most of the Hondas now. On the right side of the steering wheel, you do have your cruise buttons and some of your Honda sensing features. So cruise on and off, you have cancel, you have resume set. This is adjust the distance for your adaptive cruise control. This is how you turn on your lane keep assist. And you have your scroll wheel too. That way you can control this right side of the screen. So both sides is very uh, configurable. Behind the left side, you have off auto for your headlights. You have your parking lights and you have um, just on. And for your fog light switches right there, you'd also have auto high beams on and off. And on the right side, you do have your wipers. So the first set over here is going to be for your front wipers. So you have off, auto, low and high. Remember, you have rain sensing windshield wipers. For the rear wiper, you have off, intermediate, and on. So you can see the little wiper going crazy back there. So easy controls. If you own a Honda, you kind of know where everything is. It's pretty simple. So the display here, your full digital display here, the left side is actually going to view your sources. So you have FM, AM, satellite radio, USB, Bluetooth, apps. And the apps is going to be Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You have a customized display so you can actually hide and shelter or you can remove certain apps that you don't want to view on there or you can this guy don't want to focus there we go so you have audio and clock you can actually remove it so don't display that which is cool and uh, that's pretty much you hit the back key and back and that's pretty much it so mostly phone and sources on the right side i mean on the left side i don't know my left and my right so on the right side over here we got a few options so let me actually close up the door so we have um, range and fuel, so you can see the range on your uh, on your tank and what you're averaging, and you can see trip A, trip B. You have your engine speed and average engine time, and average speed. If you don't have a destination in the GPS, then it will just be a compass here. And if you hit menu, you can actually set go home or some of your safe places or recent. So quickly putting destinations in there. You have your driver attention level, so if you're awake enough to drive, if you fill up those bars, the Civic will tell you to pull over and take a break. Because you fall asleep, you can see who got their seatbelts on. I'm a bad noodle. You can see I'm red right there with no seatbelt on. Oil life, if that gets to 15%, it's time for an oil change. And here's some of your safety features. So here you can turn off your road departure mitigation, your blind spot information system, your low speed braking control. And low speed braking control will automatically stop you if you're driving under three miles per hour and you're going to hit an obstacle in the front or the back. Um, you have your frontal collision braking system you can turn off and pretty much that was it because the parking sensors have its own button down below you can customize the display so for example you can show what you want to show in here and hide things or you could change the design where you can put it to right now it's on round and you could change it to bar where your tachometer and your speedometer goes up and down and then you have minimal where it's the same thing but it's just less um, information and uh, gauge will hide when cruise is active okay that's cool that's cool to know and same thing with bar, and then um, that's pretty much it. So you have four options. I'm gonna leave it on round because that's what everyone's used to, with more information. But um, you can decide whichever. Oh, it's right on round. I'm bugging. All right, let's go back, and then uh, you have nothing. You can show nothing if you want no content, and that's pretty much it. So that's all your options. And also here you can switch from miles per hour to kilometers, because the speedometer is digital up top, and you have the needle here. So you have best of both worlds gas uh, gauge on the right side, temperature gauge on the left side, outside temperature, what miles you have on your vehicle. Coming along to your touchscreen display, so if you do get a Sport Touring, in the hatchbacks, this is the only model to get the nine inch display. If you get an EXL or a Sport or an LX, then you get the smaller seven inch display and that display won't have wireless Apple CarPlay and it won't have wireless Android Auto. Because you have the bigger screen here, you do have wireless Apple CarPlay in your auto, or you can still plug your phone in. You do get a built-in navigation system too on the Sport Touring, and because of you know you're probably going to use Apple CarPlay in your auto, then you're probably not going to use this guy. But 
it's cool that you still have a built-in navigation system and you do have phone you have fm tucked away over there you have bluetooth audio apple carplay android auto trip computer satellite radio and you have general settings vehicle settings am is tucked away back here system updates you know honda link smart shortcuts is, it's kind of like siri where siri will suggest um, on your iphone suggest what apps you're going to use same thing your car will suggest what apps you may use based on your how you use the screen but i don't, I don't think any of you guys are going to use that and um vehicle settings so in here is where you can change some of your settings so i like the new menu that they set up where they have pictures of different settings and the previous generation civic if you go to your settings it's just a list of settings that's it so this look this looks better the graphics looks good so here you can change like auto door lock unlock you know walk away auto lock is standard on this guy as well so if you have that feature on you walk away you don't lock your civic it'll lock automatically for you and it's just a nice uh setup and easy to look tpms is a picture of your rim so it's easy to read that way if you get confused you know what you're looking at on the left side you do have physical buttons so you have your home back key you have a volume knob slash power knob and you still have a seek or a tune button down below i know a lot of cars are going full touchscreen so there's no volume buttons or tune buttons at least you get that you don't get a tune knob but at least you get at least you get something and you have shortcuts down here that you can customize so you can actually hold an app and then it will teach you, oh, you can use it this way and then grab it and then you can just drag it down here and replace whatever you want to down there as well. So easy screen, easy to use. I'm gonna move the seat up so I can put it in reverse so I can show you guys the backup camera. No 360 backup camera on the Civic, but you do get um, Honda multi-link backup camera. So put in reverse, you have a wide angle, you have a normal and you have top down looking directly down. You have cross traffic on and off. So if there's a car coming from the left or a car coming from the right while you're backing up, It'll beep after you alert you and let you know which way it's coming from. That's pretty much using the same system as the blind spot monitoring on the side mirrors themselves. And you can also make the picture smaller so you can see the radar around your car, how close you are to something. And you have your brightness as well. So coming along right below that, you have the new design air vents that pretty much started with the Civic and now it's on almost everything now that's Honda. And they feel good, just like the left one. Hazards in the middle cool grill design i'm not a big fan of the piano black that goes across the whole piece but you know what that's just the thing this is what cars use nowadays that's just what's in i'm not a big fan of it but whatever right below that you do have your climate control same thing it's not on the screen there are physical knobs and you have buttons so you do have heated seats on the touring high medium low for the driver high medium low for the passenger you do have auto climate control on and off for the whole system you have sync so right now it's off, so the passenger could, you know, they can just, they can start sweating if they want to, and you can stay cool. And you can turn sync on where you control both sides. You have your air circulation, you have your modes, front defrost, heated side mirrors and heated back glass, AC on and off. Real easy climate control system to use. Um, there's no heated back seats and there's no ventilated seats on the Civics. Right below that, you do have two USB-A's. I know everyone's going to USB-C's, but the 24 Sport Touring still has USB A's up front. You have a power outlet right here as well. You do get a wireless phone charger, standard built in on the Sport Touring, so that's nice to have. And below that, you do have your shifter. Now, a lot of people are probably looking at this like, what the heck is this? Um, this is how you get into gears. So, <laughs> it's a six speed and reverse is all the way to the right as well. You just gotta slam it to the right and it'll put you into reverse. I love Honda's manual transmission and clutch combination. So they made this a little bit more notchier than the previous generation. And like, look how the throws is not too long. And you know what gear you're in. If you want to go to fit a little bit and up, and then six a little bit, then down. If you want to make sure you never reverse, reverse, you slam it always to the right and go down. But if you want to go to six, it's, it's real easy, real easy to drop. I love the combination. The clutch is really light as well. So it's very easy to daily. And if you're in traffic all the time, you won't really have a bad time in this guy. You do have your Econ Assist here. You do have the engine auto stop feature, even though it's manual transmission. If someone tried to argue with me that manual transmissions don't come with the auto stop feature because it's manual transmission, bruh. <laughs> right below that, you do have your electronic parking brake. And if your seatbelt is on and you give it gas, it will turn off automatically for you. But seatbelt is off and this is on, you burn up your brakes. You do have brake holds. So for all my manual transmission people out there that's trying to learn manual transmission, you're gonna love this because when your seatbelt is on, Let's say you're neutral, you turn this feature on and you go into gear, 
the Civic will not, well, your car won't roll back until you get into gear. So if you're scared and have anxiety of rolling back on a hill or anything like that, this is going to come in handy. You're going to love this. Especially if you're just in stop and go traffic at the ATM, you're dropping someone off, you know, you go to Starbucks, the line goes around the world. You don't have to keep your foot in the brakes the whole time. You can just turn this guy on and you won't go anywhere. It's actually a really cool feature. Because you have the manual transmission, the cup holder is a little bit different on the uh, Sport Touring. And simple, can fit decent sized cups. I love that this is not piano black. I like this material. This is going to last way longer than if it were piano black. And then you have your center console here and slightly soft, none too crazy. It doesn't move. It stays in one place. And you do have storage down in there and there's no pluggings down there. Come along to the glove box. It's not lockable, but let's see if it's damped. It is damped, so it comes out slowly. It's a bin style as well. And one thing the Sport Touring will give you, you probably see that guy over there. That is a Bose symbol. You get a 12-speaker premium sound system by Bose standard in the Sport Touring. Civics usually only stick to Honda's system, and that's it. They finally throw in a, a Bose or, you know, something nice. So, And it sounds actually really nice. I owned a 22 Touring sedan, and... I love the sound system. Taking a look up above, you do get auto dimming rear view mirror, and it also comes with a home link as well too. So the core doesn't come with home link anymore. The CRV doesn't come with home link anymore. So it's cool that the Civic still comes with home link standard. You don't have to add it as an accessory. And right up above, you do have LED uh, map lights, and your interior lighting all are LED. And you have a sunglass holder here as well. And you have a moonroof, and it will open all the way. Actually, I'll pull that guy back. One touch, you don't have to hold it. It'll open all the way. If you push it straight up, then it'll actually ventilate as well. Real easy to use. Here in New Mexico, most people forget they have a moonroof because it's so high here, they don't use it, but it's a cool feature. I use it in my SI all the time. And up here, you do, I can take this plastic off. You do have a vanity mirror, and it's not LED. It's a regular bolt, but at least you get a mirror and you get a light, so. That's nice that they give you that. Sport Touring does have a black headliner. So you could, you probably saw that in the video. It is a black headliner. Let me go ahead and take this guy off too while we at it. Your passenger also get a vanity mirror. So let's jump out of here and get into the back seat. So this is how wide the Civic back door is. So plenty of room to get in and out. And your back door is a hard touch back here. Which actually, this is actually soft and the armrest is soft. Still get the same uh, piano black on the door. Same door handle. I love this material as well. And you do get some storage. Let me block out the sun. See, a little, a little storage, you know, a little bottle you put back there, something like that. And the seats are leathered, leather. Follow the same design up front with the perforated in the middle. So we're gonna get in here. All right, so sitting in the back seat and pretty noisy out there, so I had to close that door. You do not get a matte pocket behind the driver, but you do get one behind the passenger in the Sport Touring. And you do get two USB A's back here. So no air vents at all in the Civics. And if you want the USB A's, I, I'm not even sure. I don't even know. I think the, does the EX um, L have USB C's back here? USB A's? I'll double check it. I'm not, I don't know why every time I do these videos, I always forget. But here's the, the cabin. It's a beautiful cabin. Like, it's really easy to use. It's not too cluttered. It's simple. It's not, like, over complicated. It's a really nice place to be in. Like, I really love the hatchbacks. Well, the Civic interior in general. You do have a armrest back here with cup holders. The headrest is here or kind of built into the seats. And you do have one light back here. So let's jump out of here and get into the trunk. So because it's a hatchback, you don't pop it open. You don't have a lever. So you do have to unlock it. And once you push the button, it will unlock for you. No power tailgate as well. But this is the widest opening hatchback Honda has had so far compared to the 10 generation. It is a little bit bigger and it's just a way wider opening so you can put things in and out. The rear seats do fold down so you can split if you want to. So you can see, I guess it's like a 60, no, that's like more like a 70, 30. Anyways, you can split the seats. So you pull the little lever back here and you can drop them down. And this is why you buy a hatchback and not a sedan. Look how much cargo space that you have back here. And because of this open so wide, you can fit all types. Of, you can throw a bike back here and you'll be fine. And you do have a privacy cover right here that you can pull. And there's also 
it's a two two piece design so you have a cover here on the window and then you pull that over no one can see in your trunk it's about to be christmas time so you know you want to hide all your gifts the family's nosy then you can hide all the gifts in the trunk and you don't see what's going on now you do get carpet floor mats you can add a rubber one from honda and part of the protection package is this rubber tray and what's cool with the newer honda rubber tray is they have these indents right here where you can buy dividers and divide up kind of organize your your back seat back seat organize your trunk space on your tray which is a cool design here's part of the bose system i believe this is your subwoofer back here and uh, you do get a spare tire down below it is a donut let me see i can do this with one hand definitely two hands do this but yeah you get a spare tire you get your tools you have a funnel because you do have a capless uh, fuel filler and if you're using a jerry can you need to use that cap first but yeah super simple if you're comparing this to the integra the integra has a more higher uh, I guess loading deck back here. So you do have to lift things up higher to get into Integra. Integra have this piece right here a lot higher than the Civic. But yeah, so you do have a cap is fuel filler. Open that guy up and you can see no gas cap. When you lock the Civic, it locks the door. That way no one can just run up and unlock your, your, uh, unlock your gas tank. We made it to the brochure. So this is a 2024 Honda Civic hatchback. We're gonna jump right to the sport touring because I told you guys in the video that Alex is playing Jane, that's the base model. Then is the sport, then is the EXL. But the EXL is actually an upgrade of the LX. It's not an upgrade of the sport, which is interesting. And then you have the sport touring, which is an upgrade of the EXL. I feel like the sport touring manual transmission Civic hatchback in the next like 20 to 30 years is gonna be one of those cars you regret to buy. Like, it's going to be just one of those cars that you just wish you bought and you should have bought it. Because, like, you know, like, right now, S2000s and, like, you know, Preludes and all these cars went up in value. And a lot of people wish they bought it before. This is going to be one of those cars. Especially um, how much low production Honda has been producing these cars. But jumping right back into the Sport Touring, six-speed manual transmission is the first option that's available in the Sport Touring. Or you can get the CVT with uh, paddle shifters. Now, I've, I've had a lot of customers that say, I don't want a CVT. You know, I only want the manual transmission. I heard a lot of bad things about a CVT from other brands. Like, they don't tell you, oh, yeah, I heard Honda CVT is trash. They're like, no, I heard Subaru or Nissan CVT is trash. I don't want a CVT. Honda has went to CVT in their four-cylinder vehicles, like standard, from, like, 2014. Like, Honda's been doing this for a while. And even our previous hybrids have had eCVTs for a long time, like, I've owned two uh, Hondas. No, I'm lying. I've owned four Hondas that had the CVT in it, and it's fine. Trust me. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, the Sport Touring is going to give you the three-mode drive system, so Econ, Normal, and Sport. You do get the power passenger seat, and you do get a 10.2 digital cluster instrument. I said it backwards. Instrument cluster, and this is only on the Sport Touring or Touring sedan. Also, if you want the 9-inch color touchscreen, that's only on the Sport Touring or Sedan. I'm not talking about the Type R, and I'm not talking about the SI. Just talking about the normal uh, Civics, um, Sedans, or Hatchbacks. Also, the Bose sound system. So, 12-speaker with a subwoofer, standard on the Sport Touring. So, the reason why I would personally get a Sport Touring, and actually, if you don't know, I had a deposit on a Smoky Mob Sport Touring when this generation first came out, but I changed my mind because at the time I didn't need a new, it didn't make sense to even buy one. So I don't know why, why I even try to buy one. So I canceled my deposit, but um, Sport Touring, that's what I'll buy. I love the tech and the Sport Touring. So satellite radio, HD radio, wireless phone charger, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, remote engine start via the CVT, LED fog lights, parking sensors, rain sensor windshield wipers, standard navigation system, you get the 18 inch wheels, Get the 235s, uh, 40, 18 tires on there. You get the low speed braking control. Um, blind spot monitoring is standard. I don't know why they put blind spot on here when on the EXL it's right there. And the Sport Touring is an upgrade from the EXL. So I'm not sure why they have it twice, but we cross traffic. Oh, that's why, that's why, that's why. Okay, because if you get an EXL... EXL does not have cross traffic. Even though EXL have blind spot monitoring, it doesn't have cross traffic. I, I guess because of the smaller screen, 
This is what I'm guessing, but you get um, cross traffic on the sport touring. Okay, that makes sense. I was about to say, Honda, what are you, what are you guys doing? You get the heated body, colored power side mirrors, integrated LED turn indicators, home link. The H you can't even get home link on HRV. Like there's not even an option. Like you just cannot get home link on HRV. And I think on Integra, I don't think Integra has home link as an option. So it's I I don't know. That's just really weird. But you have the automatic dimming rear view mirror, the sport pedals, sunglass holder. Oh wow, you don't get a sunglass holder on the lower trim. I didn't even know that. And then you get the the two point five USB A charging front console. Okay, so I'm assuming the EXL you do not get the two in the rear. Comp is built in. All right, so let's jump in. Let's go build one. And I have all four hatchbacks right here. So LX Sport, EXL Sport Touring. Now, I've had customers come in asking me to take a look at an EX hatchback. And I try to explain to them, EX is only for sedan. EXL is only for hatchback. You can't get an EXL in a sedan. And you can't get an EX in a hatchback. So don't don't get that confused. I don't know why Honda did, did it that way, but it could be a little confusing. So... We're going to build a sport touring. So I did show you guys the window sticker on in the video, but I'm going to show you the CVT. CVT is 30 city, 37 highway, 33 combined. The manual is 28 city, 37 highway, 31 combined. So I know many moons ago, you bought a manual transmission because it was more fuel efficient than automatic. Well, tables turn. The CVT is way more fuel efficient than a uh, U-shifting or an automatic transmission. CVT more fuel efficient. All right, so we're gonna choose manual transmission. The price doesn't change, which is cool. It's the same price as CVT. I know a lot of brands out there charge you. Now, I had someone argue with me about the colors. Someone was saying how they've never seen, I think, a Boost Blue manual transmission uh, hatchback, only, I think, a white and sonic gray. And uh, if, like, I get confused when I make these videos sometimes. I get comments like that because I pull this up so you guys can see what I see. Like, this is from Honda. Like, I, this is not me making this up. This is from Honda. So, we have three colors in manual transmission. Boost Blue Pearl. You have Platinum White Pearl. And the Platinum White Pearl only comes with black. I know the blue only comes with black as well. Yeah, that's why I even, I even click on it. And you have Sonic Gray that only comes with black. So, black interior is the only option for the manual transmission. Now, what I'm wondering right now is why are they showing the middle transmission with this shift knob? I think this is an optional shift knob you can get. Um, you saw the shift knob that it comes with. It does not come with that shift knob. Let me see. The same thing with this one. Yeah. Why are they showing that? That's so weird. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys Boost Blue. And base price is 31 450 And uh, you don't pay for manual. 455 for the color. Pretty much it only comes in premium color. So you're paying 455 regardless. Destination and handling is ten ninety five. You're looking at thirty three thousand even. So that's no matter what color you get, you do get the two year Honda Service Pass, which comes with oil changes, uh, oil filter, tire rotation, multi point inspection for two years or twenty four thousand miles. No, you cannot get ten oil changes within that first year. It's two per year. I've had someone ask me, oh, so can I just keep getting oil changes? I'm like, why would you waste oil like that? But uh, I'm just in the mood today, guys. But let's jump back into. Uh, some of the accessories because it's I didn't mean to click that guy. So the wheel that you can get, I I wouldn't even get this wheel. Like, I think it'll look it'll look so much nicer if this wasn't uh chrome on the outside or alloy. But I would keep the the regular wheels that it come with. But as far as packages, you have all season packages. You have a HBD package, which it's a nice touch on the hatchback. You get the spoiler. You get the you get the the front. Um, little, it's not a spoiler. It's like a like a canard almost. But yeah, it's on the corner, and you get the sticker. And you don't get side skirts because the hatchbacks come with side skirts. I know a sedan doesn't come with side skirts. So if you get an HBD sedan, it comes with side skirts. So the HBD package is actually cheaper for the hatchback than the sedan because you don't get side skirts. So something to keep in mind and jump into the accessories. So I'm jumping right to electronics, and okay, don't see none there. Now, I don't expect you to add a, a lot of stuff. So, this is dividers I was telling you guys about in the video where you can kind of put it in the little lines and organize the trunk, which is cool. But, um, door so illuminated, that's pretty cool. But you don't, you don't have too much accessories. You have the contoured high wall carpet floor mats, which are the premium mats, which are nice. It's one exterior. I'm just so jealous that you can add uh, roof racks on the hatchback, but you can't on the sedan. But yeah, body side molding, door visors. You can uh, black out the emblems if you wanted to. 
red bumper applique. I hate moon roof, <laughs> moon roof visors. I really hate how they look. Like, I would never get one in my car. I've got a roof rack from Honda. That's cool. Um, the HBD spoiler, I've seen a lot of customers add this when they get a hatchback. It's a very popular, um, I guess, accessory. And it does look good. Like, it, it's not, I don't know, it's not too much. It's actually a good-looking uh, spoiler. You have the underbody spoilers in the front. So it's just this part. You don't get a front lip. It's just the corners. So pretty interesting. And that's the walk around on the manual transmission sport touring Honda Civic hatchback. Uh, I don't know why these wheels are still on there. I went back to the, the original ones. But yeah, if I was in the market for a Civic and I want a manual, I would, I would say the Type R would probably be my first choice. But let's say you don't want to wait for a Type R or you want to spend over markup, stuff like that. Then the SI. The dealerships are less likely to mark up these. In my, this is what I'm guessing. I don't know if this is true or not, but... Um, they're less likely to mark up these than the SI and the Type R. So if you want manual transmission, you don't want a two liter engine. You want the turbo. This is the way to go, especially if you want the tech. And this is this is what I would get. And I would get it any color. I would get the blue, white, or the sonic gray. Really don't matter to me. But this is just a, it's just a really nice vehicle. Like the technology that you get standard in this is just really nice, especially if you don't want to go spending Integra money. This is the way to go. And, you know, like I said, black interior is the only interior option, but I just like that Honda throws in everything. Like, you're not, you're not missing these, and it's just an overall, just a nice package. Um, What do you think about the Sport Touring? What do you think about the manual transmission? Do you hate that only coming three colors? Do you wish it had a gray interior? Like, what do you wish Honda did? Um, I'll be honest, we are very lucky that Honda made this. Like, they could have easily phased out manual transmission on the regular Civics a long time ago. Or they could have just kept it on the sport. Or they, they could have did like the sedan and just got rid of it, you know. So um, I'm not really going to complain too much because in today's world where manual transmission is going away, I'm I'm grateful that Honda have this option. Now, it may be hard for you to get one. Or if you order one, like, well, you can't really order one. But if you go to your dealership and you put a deposit down and you ask them to order one, it may take some time to get one because... This one is, uh, I can't even remember how many we had this year. This is probably the fifth or fourth, maybe the sixth, maybe the fifth or sixth manual transmission sport touring I had all year. All year, six, six or five, all year. So at my location, it's very hard to come by. Maybe if you live in a big city like New York, California, Texas, Chicago, wherever, you see these all the time or it's way more options. But I live in New Mexico. New Mexico, we don't have a lot of cars out here compared to big cities. Especially it's a combination like this where it's just really rare. Um, it's not rare, but it's just not common because most people, the new generation cannot drive my own transmission. Older generation, tired of shifting. And then you kind of got my generation, like, you know, people was born in the 90s. We're kind of right in the middle where, you know, we love it, but it's not a lot of options like that anymore. So I would definitely jump on this if you want my own transmission. Um, especially, you know, now, because they still make it for 20... Like I said, I'm... I'm just shocked that Honda still makes this. Like, that side Type R, I knew they would keep that manual, but the fact that they keep this as an option is, is well, like, how can you complain, you know? So, anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you in the next walk around. Mm -hmm.